Hi guys, Brian the Scare Lion back with another video. It is currently 3.22 in the morning, but I could not wait to record this. Basically, here's what happened at the Elimination Chamber 2019. Now we start off at the pre-show, and the first match that we saw here was Buddy Murphy versus Akira Tozawa for the Cruiserweight Championship. This was a very good match, a lot of great spots and everything. The one thing that brought it down was the fact that they chose to have a New Day segment during the match. I, I, I feel like if you're going to be doing these little segments, put them in the pre-show, yes, but not during a match. It takes away from the match and you find yourself confused on where you're fucking focusing. But to even say that, the action in the match was great. Uh, obviously, it did finish with Buddy Murphy winning. Uh, we all really expected it. But Akira Tozawa did look fantastic in this. It's, it's hard to say where we're going to go with the Cruiserweight division. Because mm, Buddy Murphy really does need some good competition. There is a lot of competition on 205 Live. But I don't really see anybody matching up to Buddy Murphy. From here we will now move on to the main show and on the main show the first match this was surprising because we'd heard it was going to be the main event but it was actually the women's tag team elimination chamber uh, for the women's tag team championships. This match really surprised me. I thought it was all just going to be a clumped mess but a lot of people look great in this especially Liv Morgan from the Riot Squad. Like the Riot Squad together looked brilliant. But Liv Morgan put on more of a show than anybody in this. At least that's what I felt. Another great spot in this was that roll-up to get the first pinfall from the Iconics. I feel like that was perfectly executed. It, it just looked great. I think probably the biggest downfall of this match is nearly all of the women looked amazing in this. Except Naya and Tamina. Naya and Tamina did basically nothing during this. I think the biggest thing that we saw from Naya was actually Naya getting put through the chamber. It looked like it hurt. It actually did look like it hurt, but I think that was the biggest spot we really saw from those two. They didn't really do much. Well, a correction that my brother would like me to point out is that she put herself through the pod. They did go with a predictable win here. They went with the Boston Hub connection actually picking up the victory and went for a touching moment thing. It felt really nice and... The match was great to say it was for the first ever of this generation uh, women's tag team championships. After that, we moved on to the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This was The Miz and Shane versus The Usos. Everyone, and I mean everyone, saw Shane and The Miz walking away with this. But in fact, The Usos walked away with a victory in what was surprisingly a very, very good match. Shane actually looked okay in this match. Very surprising to say, considering Shane's usually just looking like an overpowered son of a bitch. But no, Shane actually looked pretty decent in this match. The super kick, the coast to coast into the super kick, very well executed from both men. Uh, Jay executed the super kick so well and Shane made it look devastating the way he received it. The one thing everybody was like proper raving about was the elbow through the table. Personally, I'm, I'm kind of tired of seeing it. Every time we see a Shane McMahon match, we know that a table's getting put for a way an elbow drop. Let's just be honest about it. But that didn't take away from the match. The match itself felt really good and it was really surprising. So another, another thumbs up from me. Going forward from that, we moved on to the Intercontinental Championship match, which was Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush versus Finn Balor. What's there really to say about this? It, it felt like a match. It wasn't the best, but I wouldn't have said it was the worst. It just felt like a normal match, just with the added two-on-one stipulation. The great thing that actually came out of this is we now have Finn Balor as the Intercontinental Champion. We could see it add a little bit more prestige, as long as they have Finn Balor hold on to it for at least a little while. If we see it passed on and then passed on and passed on and passed on, it's just going to feel like this... Great championship, it was actually made into a great championship, but we'll see it turned into another joke of a championship. We see that too much, at least let this hold its prestige. Obviously, the person that actually cost the match was Leo Rush taking the pinfall from Finn Balor. So after the match, we did see Bobby Lashley turn on Leo Rush and 
just decimate them and leave them lying in the ring. I think it's safe to say that the partnership between those two is probably over, but WWE might find a way to wiggle or run it, I don't know. But I, uh, not really interested. It, it kind of fell a little flat, it just felt like a match. So here we move on to probably the worst moment of the night. This was Ronda Rousey versus Ruby Riot. Now, um, when I say it's the worst moment of the night, I'm not talking about what ensued after. I'm talking about the match itself. They made Ruby Riot look like a weak piece of shit, which is fucking horrible. Ruby Riot is incredible, and WWE treat her like that. To lose to Ronda, just, oh, just, to lose to Ronda in such a way that it's, it was just, bam, it's done. It felt terrible. I hated every fucking little bit about it. Ronda has grown in the ring. She is really good. But Ruby Riot is fucking incredible. You should not be treating her like a secondary fucking superstar. Like some fucking jobber. I hate it. You fucked up the Riot Squad. You have immensely fucked up the Riot Squad. Even though Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan looked brilliant in the chamber. No, you, you, you have fucked it up and I am not happy. To say that, after the match, we did see Ronda facing off against Charlotte Flair. And then Becky came out. Becky came out to this massive, massive fucking pop. And she's coming out on crutches. She looks like she can barely even get in the ring. And then, bang, she just takes out Charlotte with a crutch. Fucking, I, I was on the edge of my seat loving every second of this. Uh, and then she basically offers up Charlotte as a sacrifice to fucking Ronda. Ronda goes towards Charlotte. And then Becky takes out Ronda and starts kicking fuck out of both of them. If it wasn't for what actually happened later on in the night, this probably would have been the best moment of the night for me. I mean, it didn't make up for what we had just seen with the actual match itself. But it felt like a really, really good moment. So, I am iffy at this point. One of the best moments of the night versus one of the worst. So at this point, we move on to Baron Corbin versus Braun Strowman in a no disqualifications match. The match itself was, it was all right. Like I did feel slightly invested in it. We saw weapons being used early on, but then the weapons kind of slowed down. I feel like that's probably the best way to go with Braun. You want Braun to look more destructive just on his own without the weapons. Uh, Baron, he tried using the weapons a lot and I feel like that's the right way to go with Baron as well. To make him try to utilise anything that he can to get the win. But the best part of this is when we saw the match coming close to the close, we saw Drew McIntyre make an appearance. We all expected it but a lot of us were wondering if it was just going to be Drew. As it turns out, no. Bobby Lashley came along as well. These three together look like a devastating trio. Just looking at what they did to Braun in this match, they put him through tables, they destroyed him with chairs, they absolutely decimated Braun and they looked so powerful doing it. So it looks like we're going to go ahead with an unstoppable trio. They finished the match with a shield-esque sort of triple powerbomb. Hmm, I don't know about recycling gimmicks. Kind of feels a bit forced if you're recycling it. But they made it look good. That's the main part of it. They made it look good. And it did end with Baron Corbin walking away with a victory. A lot of people, it felt unexpected because a lot of people were really thinking Braun was going to walk away with it. I'm glad they went with the way of Baron walking away with it, but not clean. That he walks away with it, having to utilise two other members of the roster. So now... We move on to the final match of the night. This was the Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship. I was worried with the two people that they started off with. I felt like Joe could have been introduced a little later on. You know, had Mary a build-up for Joe coming in. But 
they put on a great little show. Like, a lot of it was Daniel Bryan trying to be a little weasel, trying to sniggle his way out of it all. Sniggle, is that even a word? You know what, I'm keeping it in. Sniggle is now a word. But basically, you had Daniel Bryan avoiding everything to get into that ring with uh, Joe. Joe, smiling and laughing for a, quite a lot of this. The way Daniel and Joe were whacking each other, the impact, you could literally see all over their chest. It looked fucking brutal and I loved it. Who doesn't love to see that when people put everything on the line, when they put their bodies pure on the line. These two are definitely two of the top superstars in the company. So the order for the next ones to come out, it went Kofi, then AJ, then Jeff, and then Randy Orton. Everybody had at least one spot in this match that looked great. But the real hero of this match is Kofi Kingston. Hands down, Kofi looked fucking tremendous at this. And we actually had hope. That hope came for us to think... Kofi could win this. Kofi could become WWE Champion. At one point, I was like, if Kofi doesn't become champion, I'm going to be upset. But the truth is, he didn't even need to become champion for this match. This match, it just showed how fucking great he is. One point that I would like to make that, well, let's just say Tom's still raging about. Uh, the, first the first person eliminated was Samoa Joe. The reason Tom's not happy is because Samoa Joe was the first eliminated from this, as well as being the first person eliminated at Survivor Series from the Survivor Series team. Basically, uh, I wasn't too happy with this either. I did feel like the first person to be eliminated should either have been Randy Orton or Jeff Hardy. But Joe looked great, so I wasn't too upset with Joe being the first eliminated because he did put on a great show and before he was eliminated. One of the things that I would like to point out was uh, Jeff Hardy. Just before he was eliminated by uh, Daniel Bryan, he did he did a swanton bomb on AJ Styles, who was strung across the top rope. The spot looked incredible. So I... Uh, fucking hell. Jeff Hardy just blows my mind. The winner of this was Daniel Bryan. It was something like 15 minutes... For the final two, it was Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston in the final two, and it was like 15 minutes of non-stop fucking amazing action. It looked like either of them could win. Kudos to both of these superstars, they put on a hell of a fucking show. I think this is actually my favourite ending to any chamber. Fucking looked amazing, take nothing away from either of those superstars. And after this, Kofi has definitely got to get a look in as a singles competitor. You've got to give him something because Jesus Christ, he is going to be your most popular superstar all fucking year after the, after the two shows, after the fucking gauntlet match and after the chamber. He is going to be your top superstar all year. But there you go. Um, there's what actually happened at the chamber. For me, this was a very, very, very good night of wrestling. I enjoyed it from start to finish. One or two hiccups here and there, but that did not take away from the event as a whole. When it comes to forfeits, raise your hand. There he is. He's the one that actually lost. He lost by one. One point he lost. Uh, so he will be doing the choke slam onto the thumbtacks. You looking forward to it? Fuck you, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> fucking. Bobby Lashley's what cost them. Uh, so I look forward to that. That'll probably be coming out on Wednesday. But I hope you did like that video. And if you did like it, don't forget to buttfuck that like button. Please.